Well, we warned you it was coming. We've been warning you, I think, for a couple of months that it's been coming. The attack on your bank account. Have we not on this show? Oh, yes. And here is the World Economic Forum. Here they are. They're launching a new phase in the consolidation of power. It is literally like a teaser trailer for what they're about to do to us. It's really, really troubling which is to take away your ability to pay for things using government currency. Uh, they've already been laying the groundwork for, for this during the COVID, right? During COVID. Remember when they told us that you should stay away from cash? They told us this. They told us because COVID could live on the surface of cash. Watch this. Well, health experts say the coronavirus can live on surfaces like cash for up to 10 days. That has many people worried about shopping and other everyday tasks. Yeah. Everyone's worried about Not this. Not only the bills or, or coins as well. Oh, like, everything. Don't touch any to cash. Oh. It could have viruses all over it. I mean, this is the kind of stuff. I mean, it's... And what's so sad is there's people at home like going, oh, honey, well, yeah, we can't do it. Yeah, we can't touch the cash anymore. We can't. And they're like listening to these people. This is how the propaganda rolls out to people. This is what makes me really upset I think one of the things that really makes me upset about it is how they prey on people who are just trying to like live their lives and they take advantage of of those people, right? They so they put out news reports, they pull up they put all this spin how you need to do this to protect your your community. This is how you're going to protect your community by not touching cash mm -hmm. and coins and that's how you'll stay safe. Right. And then people do it. How many people here watching us right now actually believe that crap when it was rolled out? I mean, for like a brief second, I was like, wait a minute. Well, I can't use cash because it has COVID on it. Really? You never carry your wallet anyway. No, I never. Well, no, I never. I, yeah, I don't because I don't want stuff in my pockets. Um, <laughs> and because you know your well, wife Peter will. McCullough. I know my wife will. Yeah. <laughs> my wife has eight bags, you know, so I'm like, when we go out to eat, I'm like, just it's coming out of our account anyway. Like just use my <laughs> no. pin. Way, way, way back when, when cargo pants were, were in, I would get invited a lot to go out with my friends because they would want to go dancing, and I didn't dance. So I, because I had cargo <laughs> pockets, I was everybody's walking purse because they didn't want to bring one to the dance floor. So I know all about that, Natalie. <laughs> yes. Now, when I had cargo pants and cargo shorts, those, that, that was a extra utility pockets. Yes, I absolutely did that. I saw someone in the chat saying, yes, I, I believe that. I, uh, I Absolutely, that was the case with the, the cash. I was told not to do that, so I didn't do it. Uh, now, Starbucks. You've heard this story, maybe. Starbucks going cashless. So this popped up a few weeks ago, and it's amazing. You know, here's a sign in Starbucks, a number of different Starbucks. We're going cashless. Starting October 1st, we'll only be accepting card, contactless, and Starbucks and rewards payments. Dear customers, this location is testing a cashless concept. Here's another one. Currently not accepting cash as a form of payment. We're no more cash, right? If you have any questions, call a barista or call our 800 number. Here's another one. We're going cashless at this Starbucks from October 1st. And a lot of these were popping up all over the place. And then, so Starbucks had to respond. Like, well, no, no, it's not... A bunch of fact check articles come out because you know they want to they always want to make sure that they're taking care of us right so these fact check articles are garbage because they're like well it, it's not true yeah in a way it is a lot of starbucks locations are going cashless but these aren't the corporate starbucks locations these are the independent operators of starbucks who the hell cares i don't know right i mean okay it's not the ones that are owned by like corporate headquarters it's it doesn't matter Right? It's still a policy at your store, and it's a Starbucks store. And this is happening at store after store after store. And a few months ago, the International Monetary Fund uh, and 10 member countries decided to take part in what would seem like, like, like ridiculous, but it actually happened, a cyber attack on the global financial system. Here they did. The EMF and the IMF and 10 countries simulated a cyber attack on the global financial system. It's sort of like a war games. Uh, among the war games, if you read the uh, you, you read the uh, the text of this, the simulated war game, as Israel's finance ministry calls it, and planned over the past year, evolved over ten days with sensitive data emerging on the dark web. The simulation also used fake news reports that, in the scenario, caused chaos in global markets and a run on banks. The simulation, likely caused by what officials called sophisticated players featured several types of attacks that impacted global foreign exchange and bond markets, liquidity, integrity of data, and transactions between importers and exporters. 
These events are creating havoc in the financial markets, said a narrator of a film shown to the participants as part of the simulation. Okay. These events are creating havoc in the financial markets. Well, don't we... Don't we have to, though, like if we're going to move to a cashless society and we want to depend on Bitcoin and stuff and kind of like change the structure so they're not printing money and all that stuff, don't we have to move in this direction? Like, I understand the danger because that means that the government's probably going to have some kind of cryptocurrency or digital currency that they can control. But doesn't that also open it up for us to actually have more control? Like if if we have money sitting in the bank, does the bank consider that cash or is that digital? until we pull it out as cash. No, it's digital. And here's well, here's the problem, right? So I, I've come around on this. I mean, I've definitely evolved on my, my point of view on this. And my point of view is like, so it was in my head a number of years ago, cash is trash, right? Cash is trash. And the, the reason I say that, not because COVID lives on it, but because if you've got, you know, $10 in a savings account in the United States, that money is losing value every day against inflation, right? Because the 0.01% interest that you're getting on that in that interest bearing savings account. Yes, because to, it's not a performing asset. But it's losing value up against inflation. Yes. So when I say cash is trash, that's what I mean. Like if you're if your future of your family is tied to money in a savings account at a Bank of America branch, you need to get your head examined. That is going to lose value. But, and I thought, okay, well, you know, maybe it makes a lot of sense to have a digital currency. And I've evolved on that too. No, because what it is, is it's power in the hands of these few global elites. It's their power control. When you control the money supply and the food supply, you control everything. Well, Bitcoin isn't. But now that the governments have decided to launch their own cryptocurrency, it will mimic the same problems. Right. And they're going to clamp down on cryptocurrency. So they're going after. The governments have decided not to allow that because there is a finite number of Bitcoin that can be... 21 million. That can be mined and the same with other cryptocurrencies. And because they can't get in there and verify the blockchain in order to tax profits um, and they can't find who owns it. So these are all things that the government absolutely wants to be able to do as part of our social contract. So they won't allow it. Right. So here's what the World Economic Forum just launched, which is their new financial system collapse. This is what and this is like a trailer for what they are about to do to us, guys. Watch this. This is jaw dropping. So what happens if you can't access your money? I mean, we have to imagine we recently saw what happens to like in Greece and Afghanistan and most recently in Lebanon, where man went into a bank branch to get his money and he was told that he couldn't get it. And what did he do? He brought a gun back. Mm -hmm. He's like, I want my money back. I'm just, I want to take care of my family. And then became a national hero. Right. Because there wasn't the money in the banks. They had a a 40% inflation rate. Yeah. Right. No, um, well, the money's in Harry's house and, and, and the money's over in Cheryl's house. You see, it's, <laughs> it's not here. Right. <laughs> it never is. It's never right. in the bank. Right. That's the great. Uh, no, that's in the fact, great problem here. Um, it, it used to be that the bank had to keep at least 10 percent of all deposits in the bank and then lend out 90 percent. Um, that was dropped, I think, during COVID to. Was it 0% or f- less than 5%? It was zero. It went down to zero. Right. Now they don't have to have any. They don't have to have any. So they can continue to create money based on a shared belief system. Yeah, it's a fractional reserve banking, which is they only had to, if you put in $100, they only had to keep $10 it's in the It's not bank. fraction anymore. It's full reserve banking, full. zero reserve. So this tweet from uh, Alchemical Daddy, uh, you know, pointed this out and did some great job collating some of this and I, something, some of this I forgot about. But the symbolism is potent in this ad. Extreme weather freezing your bank account equals liquidity freeze. Warning of the severe snowstorm or cyber attack, climate change and cyber pandemic programming. Have a ripple effect, it says. 
hints at a solution, Ripple, XRP, maybe, but definitely a digital currency, right? And their own way to control it. The, the gist of the platform is that we, and, and they actually, the WEF rolled out their own platform on poverty, which is about the financial inclusion. So you can read this right on the World Economic Forum's website. The gist of this platform is that we can, can, we can rem remove poverty if you give us control of your money. Don't use right. cash. Oh, yes. This absolutely it's like those people. Like the people that hide money under your mattress, guess what? You will not be able to hide money anywhere in this system. Like you will not be able to hide a penny. No, we will, will control it all. We don't want you to have any, like, you know, you're going to go to a garage sale on the weekend. None of that. Sorry, that's out the window. You're not going to do any of that. You will literally tap and pay. We'll make sure that those people have, you know, point of sale things at the garage sale. So you can just tap your device right? This is why we need gold and silver. Like this is why we need tangible assets, guys, because they are coming for it. So in this piece, how financial yeah, inclusion like can help lift people out of poverty on, uh, on, um, at the World Economic Forum, and they specifically point to women. They say financial inclusion, including access to digital financial services, in, is an important policy objective because it helps people manage their money better. Accounts give you greater control over your money, your financial life. It, it empowers women. In fact, this was part of the narrative that Bill Clinton went around the press this weekend talking about it, his Clinton Global Initiative. And he said some of the best things that we've done here at the Clinton Global Initiative to help progress in um, you know third world countries is we give these microfinancing to women, their businesses. Right. Um, and that providing them with these loans really helps to lift up an entire economy, lifts them out of poverty, right? But these micro loans, guess who gets to track them? Guess who makes money on them, right. right? This was a big part of his message, which again, most of the Western media let him say with full access platforms on the airwaves this weekend. Yeah, and of course, no, you know, no contradictory statements or no pressing them no. on this. Oh, a billion people are in poverty and billion people don't have access to banks. What if we could control all of those people by giving them a digital bank account that we control? Oh, uh, and debt, well, you're not right? Yeah, and, and that's how we keep Africa and all these other countries in poverty is with the IMF and making sure that they're in loan and debt to us. You're missing a huge point, though. You're missing the biggest point. Like, how are we ever going to... It's going to be a sacrifice to tax the wealthy. That's the only way we can do it, is by <clears throat> these microtransactions. Yeah. Is, so. yeah. Because we know that the bulk of... Yeah, exactly. Again, the IRS getting 86,000 new agents at the IRS. Mm -hmm. It's not to go after the wealthy. It's to go after poor people. That's exactly what it's about. So how is this all unfolding? Well, we've seen some examples of this like in some in news reports. How about this woman who can't get access? Her all Everything in her account is just frozen. She can't get access to it. So she has no money. It's all frozen. Here's how it happens. Watch. It was a disastrous deep freeze that lasted more than half a year. A New Jersey health care worker's bank account inexplicably frozen. All of the money she had in the world suddenly out of her grasp. She was near the breaking point until a friend gave what she calls the best advice. Call Nina Pineda and get seven on her side. <laughs> well, okay. So we called ABC News and we got Nina Pineda on our side. Here's another guy, who, man who can't get access to his money. Watch this one. Many banks closing branches as more customers bank online and fewer go into the bank in person. But for one East Bay man, it caused a mild panic, actually. The Bank of America shut down his branch just hours after he made a huge deposit and his money disappeared so you can imagine how worried he was so he came to seven on your sides michael phineas wow oh, every, well that's there everyone's you go going, everyone's going to abc to get seven on their side to get my money back went to um but this is how the wef plans to uh you know scare us about the financial system i want to play this again just watch just watch their messaging now that we've had some context here watch <laughs> got to 
make sure we're taken care of at the World Economic Forum. We'll take care of you. Um, this is and it's, it is like a soft launch for like what they're planning to do. It's like here and they've done this before. Like, here's a few videos. Here's a few news articles. Here's part of our platform. Watch this unfold about COVID. I mean, again, all of the stuff was there. Right. Yeah. Here we are. Lockdowns, lo everything. Like, here we are on our website. We're saying we're saying this could happen. We're not really sure, but we think that it might happen. So, you know, be prepared because we want to install a uh, universal digital currency that we will control. Absolutely. Well, well, uh, this weekend our our daughters bought those leather folders that you like put credit cards in to you know when you go out to eat. And our youngest one was like, "What if you don't have money?" Because they're just plain restaurant, right? So they right. they like wrote out these credit cards, and they're like, "What if you don't have money with you, um, and you can't pay?" And I was telling our youngest, "You have to wash dishes." So I wonder um, if you don't have a digital way to pay. Will you then be washing dishes, <laughs> right? I guess. I mean, <laughs> and can you wash them digitally? <laughs> it's amazing to think like where we would have a totally cashless, no government currency. There would be no, you know, there'd be no EU. There would be no pound. There would be no ruble. But would... the government's main line against Bitcoin was that it was too complicated for the average person. But then this form of a cashless society isn't. It right. sort of breaks apart that argument. Right. Like we're and again, I was sort of on the side of, OK, I see this during a disaster. Right. Here's the idea that the 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 we're going to create a, uh, a digital currency that in the case of a disaster and your bank is closed because of a hurricane. Right. Your town is destroyed. Well, how are you going to get money for basic items? Right. If you have no access to your money, you can't go to an ATM. You can't do any of that. What we will do in the form of an emergency is we will then make deposits into you or your digital wallet, the, the government controlled Jerome Powell central bank digital wallet. And then you'll be able to use that. Now I've got a few. OK, great. Stimulus money is here. Boom. I'm good. I'm good to go. I saw the merit in that. But this is how, you know, once you see the merit in it, you also see like this is the this is the. Um, I don't know, the the backdoor way of getting you to be compliant. Yeah. Right? Is to scare you with this idea of there's a hurricane, there's this and that. And this is why you need a digital wallet. This is why cash, is, you should never use cash because it has COVID on it. And we will control everything you need from now on. Yes, but then they are One the thing, beneficiary if you're, if you're... of pro crypto um, research, right? Like, yes, that's a great way. It's safe. We can, we can. Um, simulate the blockchain. You guys are all on board with it, but let us control it. Right. Yeah. Forget Bitcoin. We'll control our own digital currency. Go ahead, David. Well, well I was just going to say, like, this is like, think about like, if you're, they, they have an argument about your taxes and you, you don't figure them out right. And they're like, oh no, you owe this. And like, no, I'm, I have an accountant or I have a lawyer that's figuring this out. And they just shut off your money. Like they'll yeah. just shut it off. They'll this is what Elizabeth Warren wants to do is create a federally run H and R block type system that calculates what you pay and then takes it from you immediately. Um, whereas with H and R block, you can say, I don't think that deduction was taken right. I want to ask an expert about this or I want to move this. No. With the federal system, if uh, Liz Warren gets her way, it will be federally run. You put everything in, it calculates, it takes from you, you're done here. Um, which terrifies me. Scary. Let I us know. In the... The... Go ahead, Phil. I was going to say, well, I wonder if I'm the only person that like, during this story has I've checked my own bank account twice just to be sure. That it's, <laughs> that still, it's there. still there. <laughs> I mean, this is the thing. It can, be, it can be seized, taken. You know, so again, this is why we need to protect our families. I mean, this is a show about protecting your family tonight. Like, how do you protect your family? You know, making sure that you have some way. I mean, uh, Catherine Austin Fitz talks about during when the collapse of the Soviet Union happened, the number one most valuable thing that people were trading um, was vodka. And literally, it was a currency. It became a currency. So I'm, I'm not saying everyone would go out and buy vodka, but what I'm telling you is that like when when shit hits the fan, we need to be prepared with real tangible things: gold, silver, 